This conference will now be recorded. Hi all, good evening. Uh, Shanna, you can start. Good evening, everyone. I'm glad to welcome Dr. Ashiba, head of the department, CSE, who had been a great support to initiate this webinar. And I welcome our organizers, Mr. Sampath Kumar, Assistant Professor CSE, and Mrs. Gayatri, Assistant Professor CSE, and all other faculty members. And now I welcome our presenters and our student friends and all other attendees who have joined us to enlighten this session. Once again, good evening all. Now, I probably invite Ms. Gayatri, head of the assistant professor, CSE, to inaugurate. Uh, thank you, Shamila. Are you all able to hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. As uh, HOD ma'am has stuck up in another meeting, she conveyed her wishes to all of our participants and also she wished her like to make this event as a grand success one. So I welcome you all for the student webinar series as it has been fully developed by our college students. Also, in spite of their placement activities, all of our second year and third year students gave a wonderful initiative and also came as a volunteer for this program to be conducted. Once again, I thank you for accepting our invitation and let us motivate our student friends to grow more in their career. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And now the most awaited session is yet to begin. There are certain instructions to the attendees. Once the session begins, your audio will be muted. Only the presenters will be audible. All your queries can be posted in chat box, which will be later read in the Q&A session. And now I introduce our student presenter, Dinesh Babu and Adish from third CSE A to present on the topic, machine learning process flow. Good evening all. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, Dinesh Babu, we can hear you. Yeah, okay. So yeah, uh, a good, a pleasant good evening to everyone uh, who had joined the session. And here, uh, myself Dinesh from third CSC. And here we are going to present about a simple session about uh, machine learning process flow. And um, let us see what are the contents we are going to cover in this session. So yeah, uh, first and foremost, we will be covering about theory. Uh, we will be covering theory part where we will be teaching about the machine learning process flow. 
and then we will be talking about the different types of model that are available in uh, machine learning and then we will we will be moving towards the demo part where we'll be using teachable machine which is a quite interactive tool to play with and then we will be coding our uh, basic supervised model which is very pretty simple and we will be using it so yeah let's get started um, in a complete machine learning project there are more at most three parts and uh, the first and foremost will be of data collection and the middle part will be of data modeling and finally we will be deploying our machine learning project so in this session we will be covering most about data modeling where we are going to uh, gather the data from various resources available over the web or from various resources and then we will be cat uh, categorizing those data and then we will be uh, training our model uh, we will get to the uh, keywords later in the session and then we will be training our model and then we will use our model to predict something useful so we will be experimenting with those stuff and to be more crisp about machine learning what is about what is machine learning so it is nothing but you can think it as a newborn newborn baby so it doesn't know what to do so we have to explicitly we have to train the uh, baby how to speak how to answer for certain uh, inputs and so uh, like that so it is nothing but a generalized algorithm uh, where the software application learn by themselves from experiences uh, so the uh, machine learning process will be more, uh, more precise if we have more data the more data we have the more precise outputs we will be having so after that and we will be uh, we will be not be explicitly programming what our model should do here our algorithm will take care of that part so machine learning is nothing but where the machine learns by itself what uh, our duty is to feed the machine uh, uh, train the model so we have to train the baby how to speak and once it is trained enormously the model will be uh, the baby will be able to speak by itself and uh, it will be answering the queries very precisely so yeah uh, to be precise this is the overview of the of the machine learning process so initially as step 1 uh, we will be gathering the data from various resources this can be of image data as text data or as uh, numerical data it can be of any type we will be gathering the data from various resources available so after that we will be cleaning the data so since we had collected uh, data from various resources available uh, we have some data which are not relevant to us so some we have to uh, clean our data so that it will be more relevant to what we need so we are now we are ready with data so after that we will be building a model and then we will train that model and we after training we will use that model to predict something useful and we will be using that data to visualize something uh more uh like we we will we will be uh, giving some uh, input and we will be using that uh, predicted output and we will be using it, visualizing it and it will be it will be very uh, practical to see those so yeah to be crisp these are the general seven steps in machine learning process flow where initially we will be gathering the data as said earlier so after the after that we will be preparing the data choosing a model training it and then evaluating it for the correctness so uh, yeah why we need evaluation because we had trained the data but we have to check the correctness of those of the uh, model or you can say that uh, baby you have to check the correctness whether it is predicting the output uh, correctly or not so for that we, we need evaluation after that hyperparameter tuning and prediction we will get to these each on each of these in forthcoming slides so yeah so let's say we are uh, given a glass of wine or beer and our machine learning model should predict this as wine or beer so we will be seeing the seven steps how it uh, works actually in this example uh yes said earlier we are going to gather data so in here we are having uh, data such as color and alcohol let's for now call it as features from now on this will be called as features uh, for this uh, we have we are choosing features as color and alcohol content 
So we are choosing uh, as far as the quality and quantity of the futures grows, the uh, pred precise uh, prediction uh, output will be more precise for our model. So here we are uh, choosing our futures as color and alcohol content. So once we had done with uh, done with that, after that we have to prepare the data. Actually, we had uh, gathered the data from various resources available over the web. And we have to we have uh, collected it some we may be collected it some in, in in some particular order like so we should randomize the order of the data that is collected so it's nothing but we are we should be uh, randomizing the order of the data which is collected so that it is not biased so your um, way of collecting the data should not affect the uh, prediction output so for that we are going to um, randomize the order in which the in which the data is uh, predicted. I mean collected. So after that, uh, we, we are going to. Uh, uh, so that's another, another step in this, uh, like say if you collect way more data for beer than wine, like if you, uh, you while co collecting the data from various resources, uh, you collected more data uh, of beer, such as uh, uh, like uh, the color as yellow and the alcohol content as certain percentage for only for beer as 70 to 80, uh, I mean 70 to 30, we can consider. So obviously our model will be like biased. So it will be more uh, more like it will be the our model will be predicting the output as beer most of the time. But in real case, the uh, it is not like that. We will be uh, given uh, the input any equal amount. We might be given the input as wine most of the time. So our model will be little bit biased. So uh, the main point to consider here is uh, while we are collecting the data. We should collect in it in an equal amount. We should not be biased about certain data, certain future, and so that should not affect our model, the prediction of our model. So once we had uh, uh, collected these data, we should um, probably uh, prepare the data. So uh, we, in in machine learning, in generally, we collected the data, say it as hundred percent almost 70 to 80 percent of this data will be used for training our model like a baby uh, we are training uh, consider the model as a person instead and then we we are training that person uh, 80 percent of our data to train that person so after that uh, we train the person uh, initially and after that we have to test out test that person whether he actually speaks the correct uh, i mean we he actually gives the correct output so for that we will be uh, using um 70 percent of our data for training and then remaining 80, uh, 20 percent will be given for evaluation uh in evaluation we will be what we will be doing is we will be uh we will be uh evaluating the model which we had trained whether it gives the correct output as we expected so yeah once we are done with uh data preparation we should choose our model and uh, this is the main uh, core part in machine learning so the choosing of model depends because you, uh, you there are the various types of model for text based data image based data numerical data so obviously we should select the particular model which should matches for this particular uh, machine learning uh, model so we uh, i mean uh, we have majorly three types of model unsupervised supervised and reinforcement we will get to uh, get to those in future slides so obviously when we choose in a model the next step is to train the data obviously this is the main important step in machine learning where the we are we had chosen the model we have the data in hand and we are ready to train the person that is the model so we should train him how to speak and we should uh, tra train the model with our parameters or features. Let's uh, remember initially where I had told uh, the features and we, we are using those features to train the model and the model will be predicting something. So initially, if you train a model, it, there is no guarantee that it will be predicting the output accurately. So for that, uh, if initially, if it predicts the output as wrong, we should be uh, feeding the, uh, we should be giving the feedback to the model that the predicted output is strong and we should train the model again. So this is a cyclic process uh, where the training happens in a cycling, uh, cyclic fashion 
so that the model become more precise in predicting so yeah uh, let's consider the red dots here as wine and yellow as beer so initially we had gathered them uh, gathered many datas and we, it, we had randomized the order remember where i had told the order of collecting the data should not affect the predict prediction algorithm so uh, initially we had collected the data and then uh, say we are drawing a random line in this graph in between so this will be initially it will be like this and then we will be running our training our model with those data we had collected and once it, uh, it it, it, it is being trained we can see that the line moves and then where, uh, where the wine and beer get separated and then it will the our model will be now able to predict the uh, correct output most of the time so this is general uh, i mean uh, yeah, it's, this is the overview of what tra happens in training so yeah what we had done is uh, here is because of, uh, the machines started to learn here. Actually, the uh, uh, process of uh, training happens. Uh, you can say it is as it has a direct proportion. Actually, as far as the training goes on, the prediction and preciseness of the model increases proportionally. So, as far as the experience grows for a machine, as like a human, the prediction output will be more precise in future. So yeah. Uh, we had trained the model and we had uh, kept it aside. So we don't know whether the model predicts the output uh, in, in a correct manner. So what we'll be doing is like uh, we, have, we, should, we should test the model. Uh, we should evaluate that model. Remember where we kept aside that 20% uh, of the data uh, for evaluation purpose initially while preparing the data. So here it comes into play. So we should be uh, using that 20% uh, of the data to actually evaluate the model whether it per performs correctly for our for our uh, purpose so this is the part where the model gets uh, some uh, gets improved and we will be doing some uh, tuning uh, actually so you remember where we said the uh, hyperparameter tuning where uh, if it predicts something as wrong we have to we, we have to give it give the feedback again to the model so that it uh, predicts the output correctly the next time so, so to be simple uh, this is nothing but uh, gaining uh, answering questions from data so we will be using the data to train our model or the you can consider it as a person and we will be using that uh, model to predict something meaningful so this is what ex exactly happens in a machine learning model so yeah we had evaluated the model and we have done all those stuff and we are ready with the, the model or you can say it as a person and we are we have to some do something useful and this is the core step where this is the main aim why we had developed our model the prediction we should answer uh, we should ask our uh, model to predict something uh, let's say we we, are, we will be giving uh, the color as 660 nanometer and then alcohol content as 12 percent and our model should be predicting it as a wine so once it predicts the output correctly the our model is good to go so this is uh, this is why we are using this prediction and visualizing this prediction to make a, to be more practically usable and user friendly so this is the uh, main purpose why we had developed this machine learning model so in day to day we are using this google lens where it, uh, this is actually a good example where we are using uh, the machine learning model in real life so i am handing over the session to adish to continue audible yeah you are audible okay thank you okay so so far we saw about what is machine learning and the normal process flow so now let's get into why do we need machine learning right Let's think about a business model and we know that every business model, every business, uh, I mean more technology, vast amount of data dealing technologies evolved just because of business needs. A person 
with the need will definitely find a solution. That's the prime motto. And initially we had spreadsheets like Excel and CSV files. They were used to store customer data. And later people got really good at analyzing these spreadsheets. And with that information, they were making uh, business decisions to improve their business. Uh, a best example for this is that uh, we are forecasting the date December sales as it is going to be really high the upcoming December just because it was really good for the past two years. That is what our business analysis works. Right? Uh, right after that, relational databases came into the play. Here, instead of using, a, using spreadsheets, we were using a language called SQL to query out the information and the right data to the database. And this was more organized than spreadsheets. Uh, the one thing which didn't change from the previous model is that Humans were doing the analysis work and concluding with business decisions. And uh, in the later 2000s, big companies like Google, Amazon, and Facebook started accumulating more and more amount of data. And this can't be simply stored in a spreadsheet. The data examples are like user likes in Facebook and the purchase history in Amazon. Unlike relational databases that can hold only structured data, we got messy and unstructured data that I simply can't be stored in a relational database. So that's when we got into the point of NoSQL and MongoDB. And MongoDB is used to store unstructured data. Years went by, and the result of data multiplying rapidly led to the machine learning. It's because at some point we had so much of data that human can't look like a human can't look like they did during spreadsheets. Uh, so this instead of humans analyzing the data, we gave those data to the machines so that they can make a, make the business decisions for us. Uh, this not only uh, happened just because of a vast amount of data and also due to the advan advancement in CPU and GPUs. Uh, and because of this, we provide massive amount of data and by help of the huge improvement in computations. We are using machines to do business decisions for us. This is the base theme. Now, let's get into types of machine learning models. Here, each type is designed to solve a problem, and it is important to choose the right one which suits our problem statement. Uh, the basically, they are divided into supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement. And let's get into it one by one. Okay, supervised. In supervised learning, the input data set we received already has categories. And we know the feature variables and labels which should be predicted. Uh, you guys, please look into the image. Here, the known data is the features, and the known response is the target, target labels. Okay, And we feed the known data to the model, so along with the tra training set of known response. So the, our model gets trained as if if, if it sees the patterns in the data, it will and whichever patterns lead to the known response. By that, it will be predicting the future new data and it will be classifying between what is an apple and what is not an apple. Okay. Here's an, here's an another example uh, about labeled data because uh, we can see uh, in, this is an image classifying whether it's a cat or not. And here we can see that. Past, nose, and uh, what's that? Yes, are the features, and cat is the target label. The main model, main point is that it learns the patterns in these data, and whichever patterns which leads to the one, which stands for it's a cat, and which stands and zero, which stands for not a cat. This is the base of supervised learning. Basically, it is classified into two types: one as classification and regression. Classification is predicting one thing is something or another, like it is a cat or a dog or an apple or a banana or some uh, like we saw before, right? But beer or a wine, right? And uh, regression. Regression is predicting a number or a continuous number. Uh, a classic example for regression is predicting the sales price of a house based on number of rooms it has and the number of bathrooms it has and how far it is away from a public transport and other stuff. These are basically the features. And another example is um, predicting the stock prices and predicting the average salary of an engineer based on the year of experience that he has and uh, knowledge he has based on that. Okay. 
So now, unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning is used when we don't know the labels. We are given only the input features, and with that, we group the data into clusters by looking into patterns similar to each other, right? Uh, here you can see that the input raw data is so messy, and there is no, we don't know what we have to achieve, and we just find whichever things are common to one another, one another, they are grouped into one thing. At the rightmost corner, you can see that there are three types of patterns in the from which is arrived arrived from the input raw data. Now let's look into a clear example about unsupervised learning. Consider you you own a clothing store and you got the purchase history of all the customers for the past decade. Your marketing team suggests you that to send a promotion for the next summer. And we know that not everyone will be interested in summer sales, right? To solve this problem, to solve the problem of targeting only the summer interested people, we we are going to run an algorithm, okay? To group the customers and purchase similar things together. Once we run that algorithm, we found that there are two kinds of clusters. One is doing mostly the purchases during the winter time, and another group of customers did mostly during the summer time. Now we label them as winter customers and summer customers. With these data, we can notify the people and uh, the, we can notify the team to send emails to the persons who come uh, who falls under the category of summer sales only. It, it is important to note that we provided the label and it was not there during the beginning of the process. And the only thing we had was pattern. This is unsupervised learning. And even unsupervised learning is classified into two types, which is clustering and association. Clustering is what we did before. In clustering, we give a bunch of data points and our machine groups them into categories like we did before, right? And actually association rule learning is simple. Here we associate different things to predict what a customer will be buying in the future. Example for this is uh, consider you bought a laptop and a mouse. So you will probably need a mousepad, right? Uh, so these kinds of problems can be solved using association rule learning. Okay, you, I want you guys to look into this image. This really explains both supervised and unsupervised learning in a perfect fashion, I hope. Please take a minute to analyze this image. Okay, I hope you did. And let's move to the next part. So, now we know supervised learning and unsupervised learning. So is it possible to develop a game-based model to automate like ping pong game? Yeah, you can, you could probably, but let's see. Uh, we can use supervised learning, like uh, using like using a neural network to feed the input trains and we get as two simple actions as either to go up or to go down. And the, there is a there, it has so many drawbacks in this method. Okay, wait, we, we will get into it soon. This method requires a big data set of humans playing ping pong for hours because in supervised learning we definitely need a data set and we also should know the target variables. If we do so, we need to try, we need to have a data set which which has the human playing hours of ping pong. And this is really a tedious process. And another downside in this supervised learning method is that our model is uh, can never perform better than a human because it is trained based on humans human playing the ping pong game so obviously it won't perform better than a human to overcome this we chose reinforcement learning it is similar to supervised learning but we don't know the target level here and we don't use any data set here simply it works like this we feed the random you, uh, we feed a random network with the trains from the game engine and it produces a random action either up or down. We send this output to the game engine again and it responds with another frame. Like initially, the uh, ball is moving in one direction. We send this frame to our model and our model performs random action either to go up or down. And this output will be fed again to the machine, gaming engine. And this will be responded with another frame. So this goes on an iterative loop process and 
uh, what we can see that the only output from this actions is probability of going up and probability of going down. We provide the only thing which we provide our model is the scoreboard. Okay. Uh, what a scoreboard refers is whenever uh, uh, what it can impact the model is whenever certain action is led to a win, we reward our model by increasing the probability of path it took to reach the goal. So if an op opponent scores the goal, then our model gets a penalty. So penalty refers to that uh, the probability of taking the steps which you took will be reduced to some gradient level. Okay, uh, this is. Uh, a complex process, but uh, after uh, so after a long amount of time, certain amount of time, it will uh, the the probability of making a wrong move will be really close to zero. The one fact is that our model should play this game for hours and hours of time. Initially, our model will be failing for a lot of a lot of time. Then, after once it gets a grip of the game, it will be. Um, increasing the increasing the probability which will be going to which whichever moves it took to win the game. So at the end, after half of playing, it will uh, it will really get to, it get the grip. So this is how our model gets to learn to play a ping pong game. So uh, let's see the downsides of it. Okay. Reinforcement learning has a significant downside, the bigger one, which is credit assignment problem. Consider a situation where uh, the game starts. Our model plays really well for some amount of time. It pops out, it, it, it hits back the ball for a quite amount of time in a perfect manner, but at the end of some 15 minutes or so, it fails. So our policy gradient is trained that, it is trained to a level that it will consider that whole series of steps as a negative one since it failed at the end. But we know that our model really played well for, for a more amount of time, but still it ended up in a wrong move. Uh, and we can't even uh, customize it. So this, this is the problem. Even though our model did, uh, did well for a certain amount of time, it will definitely uh, reduce the probability of the moves it took. So reinforcement learning is not as established as supervised and unsupervised learning. And reinforcement learning is mainly used for game-based models only. Uh, the most basic examples are AlphaGo, and they were uh, they these models can perform better than human minds. Okay, now enough of the types of models. We will get into a live demonstration of our about teachable machine. Here, what we are going to do is we are going to train a model which will classify apples and bananas and uh, when given the test data set. Okay. I really recommend you to follow along with me because this is really a quite easy task. So Peachable Machine, it's developed by Google. Uh, now we are going to create a project. Uh, you can see that there are three kinds of projects which is available: an image-based project, audio-based project, and post-based project. Uh, project images classifying between different kinds of images and audios and posts respectively. Now we are going to classify images. Now I'm going to I'm going to use these data: train apples, train banana to predict the test. I'm going to name the first class as Apple and upload the training data. Yeah. Now our training data for Apple class is uploaded. Now let's rename the second class as Banana. Now 
now both the plans are loaded with training data here we can add further more classes if it's multi class classification now uh, right now we are only classifying grasping between apple and banana so that's fine now we are training the model here epoch stands for number of times the data the training data should be fed into the main training model because we have a model we have a set of training data epoch stands for how many times these data should be fed into the model uh, so that it would predict better if we increase the number of epochs, it will definitely predict our output really in a good fashion. So right now it's getting trained. So 50 epochs stands for here, like they are uh, trained for 50 number of times. Now we are going to test using file, right? Choose images from your files. I'm going to test data and try this apple. Let's see whether it predicts it or not. Yeah, it does. It predicts, it says that 100 percentage this is an apple on not even a single percentage, it's a banana. So let's try another one or two, one or two. And yeah, banana also works well because you could see that the training data is quite similar to that. Now let's try something which our model haven't seen before, like here. This image has more, uh, what to say, it's an apple, but still it doesn't have enough red content and only the shape is there. But but still, but still it's it predicted that it is 82% of apple and 18% of banana. The 80% is because that our model has having seen this kind of data before. So th this is an example for how it fails. We I uploaded an image of an Apple logo which is yellow in color. Since our model was trained more on yellow color data, which will be predicting as banana, obviously this uh, even though it is an apple, it will be predicting it as a banana. And this model, this is example is just to demonstrate how our model will fail. And these are example in this example it won't predict whether it's correct or not so upload it uh, once uploaded you can see that it says 32 percent of apple and 68 percent of banana when it is not trained in a correct way these are the problems it will be facing okay so this is a basic demonstration now i'd like to hand over the session to dinesh babu where will be we will be seeing uh, real code for machine learning Yeah, thank you, Adish. So, yeah. So, can you see the screen where it shows some table? Yeah, it's visible. Yeah. Okay, uh, this is the data set. This is a pretty famous data set actually, where uh, it is called as Iris data set. We can search it in Wikipedia. And this is pretty common used for uh, where you can, uh, if you're getting started with machine learning, you can try this out. And uh, we're going to use this data set actually. And the, here, uh, given here, there are uh, three flowers actually, uh, Satosa, Versicolor and Virginica. And here we are going to uh, here we are given uh, some of 150 entries of in total uh, given uh, 50 for each flower. So here uh, you can see the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width of each flower. So these are the uh, we can from now on we can call this uh, four uh, uh, columns as data and this species as our target. So if we feed our data to this uh, machine learning model, it should predict it as Satosa. That is our target. So here we will be using this uh, real-time uh, data set in our application. 
so for that you, you should have uh, initially uh, you should be having uh, yes, uh, a scikit learn which is a open source library and pretty famous for machine learning actually so for that uh, you, uh, you can check but uh, i think wait wait for a minute just for a second and just a minute just a minute i will be showing you So yeah, can you see the poster? Uh, am I audible? Yeah, you're audible. Yeah, uh, can you see the Windows PowerShell? Yeah, it's visible. Yeah, okay. So initially, uh, for this um, scikit-learn, uh, we should initially uh, install the scikit-learn to get started with this uh, simple project. So you can uh, go to uh, scikit-learn.org and you can see where the uh, installation command where uh, she is PAP install scikit-learn and you can even uh, install that I will show how to do that Sorry. So it shows uh, since I, ha I had already installed the scikit-learn, it uh, says that requirements are already up to date. And so here uh, we can also see what are all the packages that are installed uh, in our system. So for that, we will be using the command called uh, PAP list. Now be recorded. So here it will be showing you certain uh, uh, packages that are installed here. Here we will be using uh, NumPy and uh, scikit-learn for this demo. Just a minute, I have some problem in switching the screen.
so yeah okay so yeah uh, someone asked the question what the what, what all these table is all about so this is nothing but the uh, the some useful data set which is open source and it which is pretty uh, common so here we will be having three flowers uh, and it is named as setosa versicolor and virginica so uh, here we will be having uh, 150 entries and we will be having 50 in each entry so uh, we uh, since i uh, had told earlier these four columns will be used as, uh, we will be using as our data and this uh, species will be using as our target so uh, here we will be uh, coding our uh, here we will be training our model uh, using this data the, uh, that is this 150 data and we will be testing uh, and we will be testing whether the model predicts the output uh, whether it, it predicts the output correct or not so this is simple supervised model where will be uh, where here we uh, labeled the data so we we had given for this uh, data it should predict this target uh, this species so uh, since it is uh, labeled data this comes under the category of supervised learning so here we can uh, see that and uh, i am sure uh, you had seen this uh, seen this in previous uh, uh, content by adish where he had used uh, um, this teachable machine he actually shown how to train uh, the model visually and he had uh, uh, shown the predicted output here we will be uh, learning how it happens under the hood so in this training process it uh, it actually does something called the we are use, going to use something called as classifier so what is classifier uh, you can ca uh, consider classifier as a box of rules initially the box is empty okay so we are uh, having a classifier and you can even consider classifier as a classifier as a newborn he don't know what to talk and we should uh, give him in uh, give we should train him with some data uh, what it does is uh, what you uh, why the scikit learn here comes into play is because um, this scikit learn comes in handy with many inbuilt algorithms so um, one, one such an algorithm can be used where we can use our use this to train our classifier so this is going to find some patterns in the data that is uh, going to be fed to this model so here we are having some 150 uh, entries so here we are going to feed these entries to the classifier and we are going to train the classifier and it is going to do something awesome so let's get started uh, you can use the uh, an id id of your choice or you can simply go with uh, default python shell here i am using uh, default python shell so uh, here we'll be requiring uh, using numpy so i'm going to import that so after that uh, we are having something uh, something like a data set so this data set comes in handy since it is pr uh, pretty famous scikit-learn provides some inbuilt methods to access this data set directly so we can uh, access this data set directly and so for that uh, we should be first uh, loading the data set so first for that we will be uh, using uh, scikit-learn to import that package so we'll be importing that from sklearn which is the library So under that uh, package, a sub package called datasets, and we will be importing, and uh, we will be importing this standard iris package. This is going to uh, be used for training our model. So this is importing, and then after that, uh, I told you earlier something known as uh, decision trees. So here in uh, classifiers, uh, there are many types of classifiers available, and something uh, uh, one 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 thing that is pretty understandable is decision trees, uh, where uh, you will be uh, visualizing the tree uh, and you will be learning exactly what happens in the tree, 
and you will be uh, it is pretty easy and you are also having uh, pretty uh, or many classifiers as uh, vector machines and uh, something uh, uh, many other which is available over the web so here we will be using classifier um, it is a decision tree so we will be uh, importing that so yeah uh, since uh, here we will be uh, as I told earlier in the initial uh, starting uh, area of the presentation where I had told you should uh, segregate the data for training and testing so in the proportion of like uh, 80 to 20 or 70 to 30 so you should uh, save some data for training your model so for that we are going uh, initially uh, let us uh, load our let us store our uh, data set in a uh, object So after that, and we uh, in this data set, you can see the three, three types of flowers. Uh, one starting from the one thin index and uh, zero thin index. Since it is an, uh, imagine it has a 2D matrix. And you can uh, see it as a, a matrix where the rows are uh, uh, showing some, uh, showing, uh, showing some uh, useful data. And you can use that data to train your model. So here, and see, uh, you can clearly see that the setosa starts from the, you can say, zeroth index. After that, you can uh, see the another flower vesicular starts from index 50, and then the third one starts from index 100. So we are having uh, 50 in each, 150 in total. So we will be selecting one from each, one from each flower, and then we will be using it uh, for our testing purpose. So we will be saving those three datas for our testing purpose. So that, uh, so for that, let us let me uh, create as a variable called index. So as I said earlier, it is a zero based indexing. Uh, I will be using zero and fifty uh, since the starting index for the first level is fifty and second is uh, a zero. Uh, second is fifty and third is hundred. I'm uh, doing something like this and then uh, finish. I'm ready with this index. So I should, I should uh, categorize the data. I mean for uh, segregate actually segregate the data for uh, training and testing. So let me initially uh, segregate the data for training. Let me call something as train target. So uh, here uh, I should uh, in uh, I'm using something called as delete. So here you can see that uh, here we are having this 150 data and we should uh, for training data these uh, this uh, zero row should not be present. Also this uh, 50th row should not be present and also the uh, similar to the 100th row should not be present. So this is our training data. Uh, I mean testing data. It should not be mixed up with our training data. So what I'm doing is I'm going to uh, delete that uh, training uh, testing data from my training data. So yeah. So here uh, I'm giving it as uh, the parameter as test index and it will uh, delete that uh, you say I had told earlier that this will be called as data and this will be called as target. So th we are uh, th this uh, four uh, I mean sepal length, sepal width and petal length and petal width will be called as data and this will be called as a uh, target. The, so we are telling our model uh, or a person to uh, we are feeding him actually with this data uh, for this uh, if we uh, give this data you should predict this as the output so we are doing this for all the 150 entries so i am ready with the train target uh, as i told earlier there are two parts training for training and testing target and data so for training, you should you have something called as target and data. For testing, also you have something called as uh, target mm -hmm. and data. 
So here, uh, here I am deleting the data which is used for testing purpose. So you can do something called as and uh, iris dot data comma test index which means that the entries at that index will be deleted so uh, also for this i am going to use something called as access i'm setting it to zero so what do you mean by access if the access was set to zero it will be uh, it, uh, if it it means that the it means vertical column vertical vertical position so vertically, uh, the test indexes, that is 0th index, 50th index, and the 100th index will be deleted. So if we keep uh, our axis to be 1, it, it will be something, will be, it will be horizontal. That, it, that is, it will be selecting the columns. So here, since we are deleting uh, the rows here, I will be using the axis as 0. So yeah. I had done with the training data. So let's do something with testing data. So for this, uh, so since I said earlier, for you, you, you also have uh, target and data for training and testing. So here also we are going to do that. Uh, we are going to call it as train target. Here simply we are going to call is the target and since we are uh, already you are having that uh, index that is, that should be used we, I will be using it as test index and I, I will be using uh, also uh, initializing test data is dot data so I'm using that uh, index that I had sold, show, uh, stored earlier. So yeah, so I had done preparing the data. You remember the seven steps which we had discussed earlier uh, for training and testing and then uh, I mean uh, segregating the data. So this step is over. After that, we should train the data. So since we had prepared our data, the next immediate step is to uh, train our model. So uh, we are ready with data. We should uh, train the model and we should be using it. OK, I'm having a typo over there. I will. So I'm going to train my model. Uh, let me call my model as a classifier. So I'm going to call uh, my classifier. Since I'm going to use decision trees here as a classifier, I'm going to call that So yeah, uh, for now we can imagine classifier as some empty box. And we created a we just now created the box and we had not done not nothing with that. So we should train that uh, classifier. So you can uh, show uh, since we are ready with the data training data, we should uh, train this classifier to find patterns. Actually, it is using decision trees, so it is uh, going to find patterns in the data. So you can uh, train the model like this. You can even, uh, I'm using fit, which uh, you can even uh, understand it as fine uh, patterns. And I'm uh, going to use the data which I had uh, prepared earlier, that is called as um, train data and also train target. So, since uh, here uh, our model is ready and our model is. Trained and it is going to do something useful. 
and uh, here uh, we are ready with the uh, classifier and it is trained properly and it is going to we can uh, so you remember where we uh, segregated a particular amount of data for testing uh, so we are going to use that data to test whether our model predicts uh, correctly or not so you are to do that you initially uh, print what our model should predict that is uh, test target this is the thing that our model should predict if it predicts it correctly uh, then our model is fine and good to go so it it says 0 1 2 uh, imagine uh, i mean uh, remember where i said the uh, uh, setters are as represent as a 0 and versicolor is represented as a 1 and then uh, virginica as 2 these are represented as 0 1 2 and I'm, uh, these are the target which are going, which we are going to achieve. So this is the target. And let me, uh, you remember where I said the, uh, the last step in uh, machine learning process flow, which is prediction. So we are going to do that. We are asking our classifier. Hey classifier, uh, can you predict for the data which I had prepared and it is called as test new data. I'm having an error. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry that I had made a simple typo. And um, I'm going to ask my classifier. Hey, classifier, can you predict? Actually, you can see the uh, methods that are available and you can ask classifier hey classifier can you predict uh, for my test data so yes it does can you see uh, where it uh, says as uh, uh, 0 1 2 which is the required target that we should achieve and we had achieved it and uh, this is the target which which we set and this is the predicted data by our model. Uh, so this process we had done now is called evaluation. We are uh, using the data which is segregated for testing and we are using that for evaluating our model's correctness. So here our model performed correctly and it has predicted uh, the required output as uh, Setosa, Versicolor and Virginica. So I think uh, this is pretty much it and i will be showing you the decision tree what it what really happened when i typed the classifier dot predict uh, i fed the uh, fed the parameters as the test data i mean so when i fed the test data it actually gone into this decision tree decision what decision tree does is it answers whether as it as true or false so you pretty uh, you uh, feed that with uh, some data you it will compare actually first when you fed with some data but it will check whether the petal width is uh, less than 0 0.8 and if it is true it will be directly printing it as i mean predicting it as setosa i mean it will it will be uh, identifying the pattern as and it will be categorizing it as setosa so this is in the nutshell where how the uh, decision tree works so yeah, I think this is it for the session. And if you have any doubts, you can ask. This is one of the session. Thank you. And now it's time for Q&A session. If you have any queries, you can post it up in the chat box. So Kalina is asked about feedback link. It will be available in your email. Once the session is over, once you give the feedback link, it will be generating an e-certificate. I think they have asked one question for machine learning from Afreen, Praveen, Parveen. 
for machine learning, we have to learn programming also. That is the question they have asked. Yeah, yes, I answer, answered it in the chat box, ma'am. Uh, machine learning definitely requires programming knowledge along with the fundamentals of statistics and probability. <laughs> Most of the machine learning also includes data science. So they are not so different. Data science has a part in every machine learning and artificial intelligence. More like it is the base. I hope that will suffice the question. There is a question for the presenter. Um, how to learn machine learning practically? Is there any book or online course specific? Uh, nice question. Actually, I have uh, I have saw I have seen a book named. Uh, wait, I'm not so sure. I will add add a link to that. Wait, let me. The next topic, can you make me a sub presenter? Okay, this is the book which I heard will be really interesting to learn machine learning practically. I was told, I'm not so sure. Uh, and ebook is ebook is also available if you don't want to buy it. Thank you. And I have got another question too. Okay. Uh, could you explain like how to differentiate various algorithms to real-time examples? Different algorithms. Uh, actually, yeah, each to... algorithm has its own specific need. Yeah, can you complete the question? Okay, so each algorithm has uh, its own specific needs. Like there is not uh, a single algorithm which will be solving yeah. every problem. I mean, Sharmila, your voice is breaking. I got some network issues. Am I audible now? Oh, okay. Ah, yeah, you are audible. Adish, do you want me to uh, read the question again? Uh, yeah, ma'am. Uh, actually, uh, can you please explain how to uh, differentiate various uh, machine learning algorithms to real-time example? Actually, you can do that uh, based on the problem that we are given. Uh, if we, if we are given with the data such as uh, we are if we are given with uh, data with some labels, that is, it should do this. Uh, as I to, uh, explained in this uh, last session, and um, we we were given the data, it should be predicting this. 
uh, as setosa i mean this particular flower if i give this uh, particular parameters as input it should be predicting this label up output as a prediction so here we are uh, here the labels are known so here we can predict this as supervised learning so based on what problem we are going to solve we can choose our uh, algorithm uh, like that efficiently actually we can't classify algorithms we can only classify our problems uh, and each problem requires its own different kind of algorithm which should be implemented and i guess we saw the whole session was about i mean half of the session was about classifying the uh, problems right so the real time examples is uh, if you want to classify between two things you can go for a supervised and if you want to group certain things and i forgot to tell you for unsupervised learning the best example you could ever hear is song recommendations and video recommendations they are nothing but unsupervised learning once you started to watch uh, start, uh, started to hear ai ramon songs you will obviously be hearing uh, getting suggestions more about these kinds of songs it's because once uh, you you select a song which is uh, which comes under some uh, artist that data will be used to train that model okay so it will be suggesting you certain certain kinds of songs which 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 comes under that category so there are many way more uh, real time examples for machine learning than we thought <coughs> now in a minute i will provide the link for uh, the book which i showed in amazon So this is the Google Drive also, link. Uh, I will post. I will post this link here. I think it's violating the property of uh, like principles. But still, if you guys want to really read stuff, and if so, I will provide the link. I will find some way to provide it. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, I just sent the link for that book. You can download download it through Google, right? And Dinesh Babu just sent the link for Teachable Machine. Uh, you can easily try these stuffs. And uh, uh, and in Teachable Machine, we can even train our model based on the webcam. Uh, like we can train our model by detecting our face and another person's face. And I hope it will work really great, provided the current uh, correct. Uh, lighting effects and others because it's, the data is should be really well provided we have got other another question too and this is to dinesh bobo i think and the question is for what purpose this psych psychic learn is used could you please explain once again please yeah uh Majorly, there are uh, two open source library for machine learning that is used widely. There are many actually, and Scikit-Learn comes in handy with uh, many built-in, uh, uh, you can say, as models. You can you, it has uh, algorithms for regression, clustering, also for uh, while we we had seen now uh, decision trees. It comes in handy where you don't need to explicitly write the algorithm uh, by your own, but you can actually uh, use that. To train your model and get the job done. So this is why the actually the second learn uh, is a GSOC project, which is Google Summer of Code, which was developed by a student and then it became popular and it, it is uh, getting popularity right recent by quite recently and then uh, it is quite easy too. So you can try that out if you are interested. And, and, Python became and, very popular. Second learn got in certain sense. And 
scikit-learn is uh, built on top of mumbai and uh, panda so it has uh, it doesn't it really don't need so many dependencies to get things started they they are more like one, uh, close to each other numpy pandas and scikit learn mancod everything thank you and we have got a last question too you have any good suggestion for our friends like how to spend this pandemic period with learning emerging technologies something like that we have got many open source uh, i mean free uh, tools to learn actually from uh, like uh, udacity um, from udemy and also from coursera they are providing their premium content free uh, during this time and you can use it efficiently if you are interested in learning this stuff one thing is that knowledge is totally available everywhere for free of cost uh, we just need to search right if one can learn by his own uh, no he doesn't even need a college degree i believe you don't even need to pay for anything like it, it become uh, for everyone it is available and it is open source for all, at most all the resources are free of cost so you can try it out thank you and we'll end up this q&a session and now i wholeheartedly invite ms gayatri assistant professor crz to deliver vote of thanks very shukriya thank, thank you uh, actually it was a very good session by both uh, dinesh babu and adesh they took uh, very emerging technologies and like uh, this uh, machine learning and gave a very basics of uh, how to we can go forward towards the machine learning and overall view overview of ml and how to prepare the data and extract it and uh, given for the prediction and also they have explained the process of ml very briefly in a very easy manner and also they have explained the models of ml uh, that has that has been given by artish and uh, they have explained all the algorithms with the example and also we have learned more things through a demo and what is called as a scikit learn and how to install them also we have shown at last you have run all the your uh, coding through your uh, python shell with all your classifiers it was a very good session it was a very useful session for all of us uh, thank you adish and dinesh babu yes now we have come to our end of the session thank you all for your active participation uh, i would require support from all of you for other days webinar as well that is we have uh, from tomorrow onwards till our saturday we have the uh, number of topics are there in your uh, brochure that is basics of blockchain technology tomorrow and third day is on uh, quantum computing and fourth day will be your placement and quality smeader and fifth day is design thinking and emotional intelligence and sixth day is importance of foreign language for placements so we i would like uh, you all to register for the same and and also we we require support from you all of you to support the webinars as well thank you thank you once again thank you ma'am thank you everyone for your uh, wonderful time thanks now one more thing i'll just place the feedback uh, link in the chat box so that you can able to get your certificates Yes, my feedback link has been uh, pasted in your chat window, so you can just give your feedback, and automatically certificates will be emailed to you.
guys we'll wait for two more minutes to for you to copy that link so that you can submit your feedback form then we can end up our session Yes, ma. Hope you all have uh, copied your feedback link. Okay. So thank you. Thank you all. See you soon. Bye.